this crisis that we've been in, for me, is an urban crisis in lots of ways and is very much connected with the model of urbanization uh, that has sustained capitalism since 1945. What's happened since 1945 in the United States is the United States has got out of depression, recession conditions by building houses and filling them with things. And it's done it through suburbanization and, and the like now. Where did this crisis we're in come from? It came from a subprime crisis in housing, uh, uh, but it's also an indicator that the suburban solution to absorbing surplus capital, which has been going on for the last 50, 60 years, has probably reached an end point in the United States and we can't do that anymore. We cannot get out of this crisis in the United States by building more houses and filling them with more things. It's not working that way. So there's a very, very strong relationship between uh, if you like, the health of an economy and the dynamics of urbanization. And when the dynamics of urbanization go bad, then the economy goes down. And we've had a lot of evidence of that over the last uh, 20 or 30 years. And interestingly, the only part of the world that's doing okay right now uh, is, is East Asia focused on China. And what is China doing? Building cities like crazy. Building pro it's building houses and filling them with things for, the, for, for a rising middle class. So in a sense, the kind of solution the United States had in 1945 uh, to its depression conditions of the 1930s is now being transferred to China. So this relationship between urbanization and the, what's going on in the economy in general is a very important thing to look at. In, in the midst of a crisis, you've nearly always got surplus capital and surplus labor side by side, and there seems to be no way to put them back together. Uh, but one of the ways in which you can, you can solve that dilemma is to, is to take the capital and to start to invest in built environment and rebuild a city. Now, this happened in Paris in, in the 1850s and 1860s. Uh, there'd been a crisis of 1848. And, and then uh, Louis Napoleon came to power and looked at the situation and said, I've got to get out of this economic crisis. How am I going to do that? Well, let's build all these new boulevards. Let's build all of this new Paris. So what, what we look at now when we go to much of central Paris is what was done during that period. And so that actually employed the capital and employed the labor. We will see exactly the same thing going on in China right now that, that uh, with, with a lot of surplus capital and, and a lot of unemployment, they're absorbing all of that in these vast infrastructural uh, uh, projects, building new, uh, uh, new cities, uh, redesigning old cities. So, so, so that is a fantastic way to take surplus capital and sort of, sort of uh, use it. But then you get overinvestment in the built environment and you get a property bubble and a property boom and, and, and then it's likely to come crashing down, but it'll come crashing down maybe 15, 20 years later when, when, when you know, maybe the originators of the project have all gone. Well, urbanization helps you get out of crises, but it helps you get out by actually defining what the next crisis is going to look like. Suburbanization uh, in the United States uh, saved U U.S. capitalism after 1945. I think that's a general proposition I think I could sustain. It, sust it, it saved capitalism, but it saved it in such a way that it actually consumed a vast amount of land, a vast amount of energy. It set in motion a sort of dynamic of, uh, of highways and, and, and automobile culture and all the rest of it. And it also set in motion a certain kind of set of political attitudes because living in the suburbs is a certain way of life. So that in itself becomes self-perpetuating and then it becomes very, very difficult to change that, uh, to adapt to new circumstances. For example, if you said to everybody, look, the suburban way of life can't work anymore because its energy requirements are too profligate and we just cannot sustain that anymore, people will be very, very upset. They want to keep their lifestyle. Therefore, it'd be very difficult to solve the, 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 the environmental problems that arise out of global warming and energy consumption without actually changing the model of urbanization, and that's very, very difficult to do.